Hi and welcome back to Booktube with Amy. This is going to be my end of July wrap up. So let's start with my previews. So first up from NetGalley this month, I read Sister to Shadow and that's by Catherine Livesey and this is going to be coming out on September the 30th, 2021. Um, so I really enjoyed this book. So the premise is we have two girls. We have Alice who is a bit of a loner. Her mum and dad were either murdered or ran away and left her when she was really small and she's basically been having to fend for herself since that age. The town that she lives near, she lives up in the mountains in a wee cabin and the people of the town think that she's a witch so they are like we are now looking after you, don't come near us and she's had to learn to be really self-sufficient and she therefore doesn't have a lot of social skills, she doesn't know a lot of people because everyone is so fearful of her but she has one friend and that is Lily and so Lily um, also doesn't have parents, she lives with her uncle and her uncle is the local apothecary and so she takes an apprenticeship with him. She goes up to see Alice a couple of times a week and they are best friends and they call themselves the the sisters of shadow so alice knows her mum was a witch and she wants to be a witch but has not been able to harness her power yet and Lily is just not really interested in being a witch she just wants to take over her uncle's apothecary and like live her best life and they have a little bit of a falling out a little bit a little bit a little bit of a falling out and then Lily goes back up to see Alice to apologise and make amends and Alice is not there but she finds a mysterious note from a lady called Hecate Winter who has said that if you want to learn how to unlock your powers you will meet me here at this time in this place, tell nobody and um Lily realises that she's going to need to go and save Alice. She thinks that Alice has been kidnapped and she has not went off her own free will. She doesn't think that's something that Alice would do and she decides that she needs to go and save the day and that is the the basic premise. So the two main characters Alice and Lily are both great. I think that Alice has this real dark quality to her with everything that she's been through you know her life hasn't been easy and that really comes across in the book and I really enjoy her relationship with Lily because Lily is just so brightness and light and optimistic and so I think that the two of them together they, they really help each other you know Alice almost helps Lily stay a bit grounded and is like look listen it's no swings and roundabouts, it's no magic and rainbows, this is real life and that really helps Lily and then you know Lily really helps bring Alice out of herself a wee bit at times and as you know like it's no doom and gloom, sometimes things are good and they just teach each other to enjoy life a wee bit better so I really enjoy their relationship, I think that their friendship is done so brilliantly and I also really like as well that this is, it's YA, um, I'd certainly say younger YA personally and I really like that they sort of have Alice's mental health issues displayed really well although they don't out and out say that she suffers from depression, you know some of her character traits and especially how sometimes she can treat Lily, pushing her away and not really wanting people to get close to her. I think the author handles really really well and I think that it's brilliantly done you know it's not the focus of the book it is just uh these are traits that Alice has and this is why she has these traits and this is what Lily basically does to help and to to bring her out of herself a wee bit and I think that that's handled really well um especially in a, in a fantasy setting it's something that I haven't seen done a huge amount normally you find that in maybe YA contemporary or you know just um, literary fiction but I, I felt like it was handled really really well in this book which I enjoy. The book is definitely cottagecore vibes. There is so many 
descriptions of you know the the forest setting in which Alice lives, and um, you also get it from. Lily's perspective as well because she really loves the forest and so there is so much of that so if that's something that you enjoy in a book you'll definitely enjoy this. We all know that like I am not a fan a huge description however apparently when it is a forest's I like it because I really enjoyed this. There was no a point where I was like, oh, stop describing this to me and just crack on with the story. I really enjoyed the descriptions in it. So apparently, like, I like cottagecore and that's grand. Um, I really loved Lily's character development in it as well. Because I feel like in so much YA fantasy, your female main character, you know, she gets faced with a, a task and a quest and she is the one who needs to save everybody and save the world and she's just like, cool sound, aye, let's go. Like, and it, it feels a bit unbelievable at times because, like, if I was faced with that quest that like would not happen I would be like oh my god I'm going to need to do this I'm going to need to do that I don't know where to start like how how am I going to handle this like I don't even like answering the phone how am I going to save the world like and I feel like that is a wee bit more realistic and you certainly get that with Lily so Lily at no point is overly sure of herself and she always sort of struggles a wee bit she has been really sheltered by her uncle and so she's never really had to do anything on her own and I think that although again like it's no out and out it doesn't say like Lily suffers from anxiety you know that the behaviours and her thought process and her overthinking that comes across in the book really gets across that she is clearly anxious and I mean she's battling witches and that to save her pal so like fair I'd be anxious too but again it's just handled really well and it's never the the focus of the story it's just you get things from Lily's perspective and you take away like oh yeah like I, I get why she feels like that and again there's like other characters that she meets that really help her tackle her anxiety and you know she manages to not overcome it but certainly live with that and I think that that's just done really well. We meet some side characters along the way as well who are brilliant. I think that they are really well developed. You get emotionally invested in all of the side characters that you meet. There are so many different we cults and covens and so much folklore and local superstition in this book that is just phenomenal it makes it a really interesting read the pacing is great it was a quick read for me i thoroughly enjoyed it there is witches there is magic there is lgbt rep the only downside for me <laughs> was the ending so it's the first in the se in a series of course it is I feel like I don't even need to say that anymore. These are probably just going to assume that anything I read is the first in a series. But it's the first in a series. And so when we get to the ending, we got no answers to all of the questions that had been built up. And, you know, like, sort of every time you find something a wee bit out or some dimension something, you know, it just raises more questions. And so to not really get any answers to any of the questions was a bit frustrating and a bit of a letdown. I, I totally appreciate it's the first in a series but like give me something like don't just make me have to read the next one because I want the answers like give me something and then have me read the next one because I want to explore this world again and spend time with your characters again so that was a bit disappointing for me. Um, I, I really didn't enjoy that, but the rest of the book was phenomenal. And maybe if I was to have read, you know, the first one and the second one in quick succession, I would have rated it a five. Um, but I didn't. I have to rate it as it is. Um, and I rated this one a four star. Next up in Net Galley, I read Avoid of Magic by Sandy Williams. And this comes out on the 27th of July 2021. And, um, I did not love this one. <laughs> so, premise is we have our main character, Kennedy Rain, and her and her family run a hotel. It's not a normal hotel though, because it never is. And um, they basically own a hotel that is mutual ground for werewolves and vampires and all manner of supernatural beings to come and hang out and it is politically neutral. They cannot use their powers, they cannot 
shift into other forms. They are completely human when they are in this hotel. So the vampires love it, you know, they can watch the sunrise, werewolves love it, they can enjoy seeing the moon and um, it's somewhere that both factions can just go and hang out and live a wee bit of a normal life for a period of time. So this sounds awesome to me, this sounds like the hotel and John Wick but like vampires and werewolves which is so far up my street like so far up my street so Kennedy's parents they go off they're having a wee vacation a wee holiday away and she is in charge of the hotel and the daughter of the werewolf Alpha comes in and tries to book a wedding and she wants to marry the head of the vampire clan and um that that doesn't doesn't go down well it doesn't sound like something that anybody either faction really want um but she is adamant and she tries to book the hotel for her wedding and she tries to get kennedy to basically help them conceal the fact that they're going to get married until they are married um and again like it just sounds like i would love it forbidden love check different paranormal races check John Wick-esque neutral territory hotel check but um no <laughs> no so so Kennedy as a character is seriously annoying she is annoying for, for the get-go she is just so poorly written her internal monologue is just like uber sassy and ugh, that, that just annoys me because nobody is that sassy in real life. Nobody. Like, and I am a sassy gal. I, I, I am a self-confessed sassy gal. But no, even my inner monologue is as sassy as Kennedy's. And it's like, you can just have a conversation with someone without it having to be like a constant, you know, punchy line conversation. You can just say, all right, how's the weather? Aye, weather's lovely, you know, like, and there's just none of that, I feel like every conversation, she's at a 10, and like, so then when drama starts kicking off, you're not even getting the full effect of the drama, because she has been at a 10 the entire time, so that really frustrated me, I felt like the author, she just wrote it with like, I was going to say like with teenage girls in mind but of course she did because it's YA fantasy and I am an adult so like I am perhaps not her target audience but I, I just feel like I get the sassy female lead I do and I know that I say over and over again I find it sometimes to be quite annoying but Kennedy Rain is like every single sassy female lead ever or rolled into one and there was just nothing original or unique about her character so she was bringing nothing new to the table everything that happened was just like eye-rollingly frustrating so I really didn't enjoy reading her and the fact that she's the MC you know is is quite bad because if I don't care about her and I don't enjoy reading things from her perspective then I'm probably no gonna enjoy the book on top of that although it is a really interesting premise which is why I requested it because it like I've said 18 times it sounds so up my street <laughs> but it just wasn't you know for the for the get-go it was an info dump situation you're not learning anything in a clever way you're not learning anything with the character she is literally just narrating things and dumping all this information on you and like she keeps as well like sliding in wee quotes that our mum used to say and then like explaining them and I just don't feel like it was very well written like there's just so many different ways that that you could have done it that it could have been more interesting and not just felt like you've bombarded me with 50 pages of build up information all at once I just really didn't like it it wasn't my style at all and I just wasn't having fun reading it and then we're introduced to who we assume is going to be the the her love interest and again for the get-go it's just like sexual tension up the wazoo like there is no 
slow build, like they hate each other, but she can't stop perving on him. Like everything about this guy is just so attractive that she can't like take her eyes off him and she like is like, oh I so hate him, but like if he pushes me up against the wall in the lift then like fine. And it's like, oh, you don't hate him though. Like you don't hate him. So stop trying to force an enemies to lovers narrative because like it's no gonna happen. Stop it. And again, like I just hate that, like like you can't love somebody for the get go, like and it's just frustrating. Like I didn't want to read an entire book about your sexual tension build up. That's no why I read. It's no what I am here for. No. Like fair enough if that is a part of the story, but then like give me more story so that, that is like a tiny wee part and no like the entire plot. So I just, I, I really didn't enjoy it and I actually DNF'd it about halfway through. I just, I couldn't do it anymore. I wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't having fun with it. And I, it was just really frustrating. Kennedy's character I felt didn't really develop. She just sort of stayed the same and she was just trying to deal with the situations that came to her and her dully and sassy way. And it just wasn't for me. Then I read The Whistling by Rebecca Netley. And this is going to be out on the 14th of October 2021. <sighs> and I didn't like this either. <laughs> so, um, it's a horror. It is a, a ghost story. And basic premise is that our main character, Elspeth, takes a nanny position out in the island of Skelsey and it's a wee remote Scottish island out in the middle of nowhere and she is looking after a young girl who has recently just lost her mum and also her brother has just died in an accident and since then she has been non-communicative non and... Um, Elspeth basically goes to look after her and to try and, you know, get her to communicate again and is dealing with the fact that the house may be haunted and we don't know if it is being haunted by actual ghosts or um, the ghosts of the past, is, is what it says on the blurb. <laughs> so I think that the Scottish Highlands is probably one of my favourite settings for a horror novel. I think that it's somewhere that I have been a lot so I can picture it really vividly in my head and I think that there is something just so creepy about the setting and the fact that you're usually isolated and you know sort of a on your own so I think that that is such an amazing setting and usually if there is a horror book set in the Scottish Highlands, I will read it just because it's set in the Scottish Highlands, which is exactly why I requested this one. But I also felt like the premise could be interesting. I think that it could be so creepy to have someone in the house that is potentially seeing or hearing things and them not be able to communicate it clearly with you. I think that that could be so, so creepy. Um, so I, again, a really interesting premise. I just didn't enjoy the execution of this one. So uh, some good points. It is really, really atmospheric. It um, totally paints a really clear picture of the island, of the people who are working in this house, of the setting. You can picture it so vividly in your head. So it's so atmospheric and really creepy sounding from the get-go, which is obviously great. I just felt like it was really slow. And unfortunately, I DNF'd this one as well. I got about maybe 100 pages in and just nothing had really happened. And I just don't like that. I quite like my horror books to be fast-paced, even if it is a ghost story. I know by default, a lot of ghost stories are quite slow. I just don't like that. I don't want the build up to be longer than the time I am actually experiencing the ghost, experiencing the ghosty activity. I want the ghost activity to be hitting me in the face like 10 minutes after I'm in the house and it just didn't happen like that, this one for me. I felt as well like we found out that the way that the little boy had died was suspicious circumstances, interesting. Um, but just too many questions being asked and not enough answers getting back 
for me so I just was losing the interest quite rapidly. Uh, it's unfortunate because if I was to like give this book a tagline from what I read it would probably be a wee bit like Blythe Manor meets Broadchurch so we have you know the Broadchurch aspect, wee boy goes missing falls off a cliff you know um, totally broad church and then Blythe Manor in the sense that it's this you know woman who's dealing with her own issues coming across to to be a nanny um, to, to children of the manor so I was like I am so gonna love this it's gonna be amazing and unfortunately it was just too slow for me couldn't even tell you what happens because um, I, I, I DNF'd it unfortunately but um, if you do like a really slow burn atmospheric ghost story this could be totally up your street it just wasn't the book for me so then i read maggie's grave and this is by david sodergren so oh this was an immense book <laughs> I have been so excited to read this so mares from harpies in the trees did a review on this and the book just sounded immense so I was like great as soon as I'm paid I'm buying this and that's what I did and so now here we are and um, so we have Maggie she is a witch and the local townspeople are no pleased she's a witch and so they they kill her in a pretty brutal way and then about 300 years later knows all as it seems and Maggie isn't quite as dead as was made out to be and um, there's a wee bit of a killing spree that happens <laughs> so um, again this book is set in the Scottish Highlands I was really feeling that theme this month apparently but this was about a thousand times better than the whistling um, I so adored this book there are going to be spoilers so if this is a book that you plan to read you can skip to my next timestamp when I talk about the next book so oh, Maggie was just a dream an actual dream of a horror character she oh, you feel for her for the get go so she is pregnant and basically one of the townsmen has been having a wee bit of an affair with her but now that he's here with his pals doesn't want to admit he's been sleeping with the local witch and it's his baby and um, he is flat out denying it he's like oh hell no and she's like you can't kill me because I'm pregnant and they're like well no we'll just take your wane for you and uh, put the wane on trial and so they basically cut her open and rip the bear out her while she's alive which is just horrific the poor poor woman and so you just feel for her for the get-go and so when she you know comes back alive as a bit of a mental witchy ghost I have a real hard time feeling like she's doing anything wrong like I am like so team Maggie it is unreal and we all know that I love a villain at the best of times but Maggie is a villain that you can really get behind but then here is the really interesting part because obviously it's 300 years later so the people in the town that she is killing you know they haven't actually done anything wrong and we're following a wee group of friends there's four of them and the author really delves into their characters their relationships with each other and their relationships in the town so much that you also really care about your four main characters so as much as I was rooting for Maggie and I was like yes you go like get them all killed I also didn't want her to kill my four main characters because I, I really loved them <laughs> so it was really interesting because at points I didn't know who I was rooting for and um, I the character development was just brilliant to the point where I was like who do I want to win here like I was reading it stressed because I was like I don't know how this is going to go I don't know who's going to win and I don't know who I want to win but um it was a completely phenomenal read probably one of the best horror books that I have read this year Maggie is so vividly written so when she comes back as our witchy self like I could totally imagine her in my head and that is unusual for me I am one of these readers that when I do read like I usually superimpose a actor as my main characters because I am too lazy to imagine the actual character and usually like if something's happening like I'll just like I don't know like I just don't imagine it like I will read it 
and I'll enjoy it, but like my brain doesn't make it into like an actual image and I know that that happens for a lot of readers and it takes a pretty special book to make my brain do that and it happened with Maggie's Grave. Like I could see Maggie and I could see everything she was doing so so clearly in my head that it just was amazing to me. I was so enjoying it. Every time she appeared on the page I was like yes here we go Maggie's back because I could just see her so clearly and I, I binged this book over a couple of nights because I just couldn't put it down and when I wasn't reading it I was thinking about reading it and when I wasn't thinking about reading it I was thinking about thinking about wanting to read it. <laughs> it was just so good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I feel like this gave me like proper old school horror vibes as well and um, I really enjoyed the fact that it was by a Scottish author because I feel like sometimes and I know I think I've spoke about this before in the channel but when I read horror books like sometimes like it's just it's so Americanized and you know like seeing people's reactions to what's happening I'm like that's a wee bit unbelievable like I don't think people would react like that so because this is a Scottish author and you're having like people's reactions like obviously being a Scottish person I was like totally sold on it I was like this is completely believable like and the amount of swearing in this was brilliant because we're a sweary nation like and you know the fact that like people are calling Maggie a cunt you know like <laughs> this big mad witch from beyond the grave is coming to kill you and you're still just calling her a cunt it was just brilliant to me and like the amount of um comments about our politicians as well was phenomenal in this like I will definitely pass on the tip about Boris Johnson to anybody who requires it um it was it was really fun and really funny at points as well and actually at some points a wee bit emotional you know um when Maggie is is killing people she's not killing them just because she wants to she's killing them because either someone in the town has given birth or someone in the town is has conceived a baby and so then she thinks it's her baby and so she is killing people to find her baby and I don't know there's just something I was going to say so lovely about that <laughs> I don't think lovely is the word um no lovely probably isn't the right word but there's just something <laughs> I don't know how to explain it endearing right we'll say it's endearing so I'm a wee bit endearing about that like she's not just killing people for the sake yet she's not doing it out of badness she's doing it because she thinks that they are standing in the way between her and her baby and like she just will not allow that to happen she just wants her baby and then she'll go away and she'll leave them all alone um also the the older people in this town are so weird and I can totally see that. I have travelled a lot in the north of Scotland and stayed in a lot of different places up there and like I can totally see this happening in a wee town up in the north of Scotland like absolutely. Some of them are just so creepy and a bit weird and you're like mm, like hi I could I could I could totally see you being in this situation and making the same choices um so I like the the character development was just so good for even all the side characters like it was completely and utterly believable and in the end um although I did guess the twist just to say um I, I did guess that quite early on actually I suspected that that could have been the case and then there's like sort of feel like a false end in a few will so it ends and then you're like alright well I was wrong obviously like the script's just been flipped a wee bit and then there's like another wee bit and you're like oh no no this is the case um the only thing that I felt a wee bit disappointed in was um Beth so I felt like in the end when she sort of flipped her lid a wee bit like that that could have either happened a lot earlier in the book and then been a wee bit more developed as opposed to it just being like a wham bam thank you ma'am right at the end I think that it would have been interesting if we had her sort of losing the plot a wee bit a wee bit longer but um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this book I will absolutely need to look at um, the author's back catalogue I can't talk today I will absolutely need to look at the author's back catalogue and um, purchase everything because I thoroughly enjoyed this and like we all know how much I love a Scottish author so I'll definitely need to check them out and no surprise but I rated this book a 5 star I just thought it was phenomenal
Then I read The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock and that's by Imogen Hermes Gibber. We all know that I love a mermaid book so this is another one that Simon had got me for Christmas because mermaids. Uh, this is not a mermaid book. <laughs> Let me just put that out there. It is definitely not. So if you are looking for a book with some mermaidy action, this this is this isn't it. Um, however, doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. So the basic premise is Mr. Hancock is a runs a fleet of ships, and his captain comes back and says, "By the way, sell your boat for a mermaid." And he's like, "Well, what am I meant to do? We did mermaid." Like, how am I going to live off a dead mermaid? Like, no. Nah. So he decides that he's going to put his mermaid in display and charge people to come and see it. And then we also meet our other character, Angelica Neal. And Angelica Neal is quite a, a well-known prostitute. And um, quite a lot of men are lining up for a, a dalliance with, with her. And her ex-madam basically proposes to Mr Hancock that she rents his mermaid and basically shows it off to high society and she will, you know, rent it off him for quite a handsome price. So he decides, aye, let's go for it. And he meets um, our, our Angelica and um, falls quite head over heels with her. She does not reciprocate really. She actually has her eye on somebody else at this party and then um, the, the story just sort of goes on from there. So I definitely know a mermaid book however I, I did enjoy this. I felt like the book was quite chunky for what it was. I felt like it could have been a wee bit more slim lined and I would have perhaps enjoyed it a wee bit more however I think that the book made some really interesting points. So we Angelica basically is trying to get away from prostitution. She doesn't want to be a, a prostitute anymore. You know she wants to settle down, she wants to be a wife, she wants to live in high society and um, that's sort of what she is gunning to Awards, but her old madam keeps trying to, you know, draw her back into the life because obviously she is well renowned. So I can imagine being her madam is rather lucrative. Um, that she's like, no, no, like I want to go alone. And so in the beginning, the first mermaid, to me anyway, as a metaphor for how women can be sort of bought and sold and traded and, and displayed in a certain way within the society of this time. And I felt like that was really interesting. And, you know, because Angelica is trying to get out of being a prostitute and she's trying to get into a marriage almost, there's some really interesting conversations that happens between her and a couple of her friends who are still prostitutes and a couple of her friends who are now married and you know living in society and basically the author's making you know the comments about how like a marriage isn't any different for being a prostitute it's just a, a different type of business arrangement um, and you're still sort of in service to a man so like it's it's not really any different you're not really free um so I felt like that was interesting and the author did make some interesting points and um it was very feministy in the beginning, I felt. And then the second half of the book, we meet our second mermaid and she um, is being held captive. She is alive. She isn't dead, unfortunately, like the first one. I felt like the second mermaid is a metaphor of how trapped sometimes we feel by grief. So some things happen in Angelica's life that... Um, makes her makes her really sad she um unfortunately loses a baby and she she and mr hancock are married now you know mrs hancock in the title so i feel like that's no a spoiler um i so they unfortunately lose a baby and he is sort of a no there for her emotionally he is um invested in other stuff he isn't really giving her any sort of a attention and dealing with his own things and so i felt like I the second mermaid was sort of a mirroring how Angelica felt in our in our marriage. I think she felt quite trapped and um you know really trapped in her own grief as well and so I really enjoyed that. I thought that, that was clever and again they make some really interesting commentary in the second half of the book you know around women and um what it means to be a married woman what it means to be a mum and sort of a woman's place in society and um how basically it's 
so if they still viewed upon if you have a, a miscarriage then that, that there's something wrong with you and not that there was you know a medical reason um, so I really interesting and I did enjoy the book it just obviously wasn't what I was going into expecting I felt like at times you know it was too descripty like I said it was it was quite a chunky book I felt like it could have been slimlined I felt like there was characters in it that didn't really need to be in it um, you know Mr Hancock's sister probably did need to be there um, the niece I mean I don't really feel like she played a huge part in the story probably did need to spend as much time with her and um, I I just felt like it could have been trimmed down a wee bit and I would have enjoyed it a lot more there could have been less descriptions in it however enjoyed the premise uh, enjoyed some of the social commentary that the author was trying to make round about you know women's places in society and I actually think that a lot of that is still quite relevant today and um, I think you know anybody reading this book would would think that it's no anything earth shattering here um so i i rated this book a three stars it was a perfectly acceptable read i just think that i was going into it expecting something else so that is my bad if i had done a wee bit more research then i maybe wouldn't have been quite as disappointed by the lack of mermaids next up i read the tangled lands and that is by i'm going to butcher this name so apologies in advance it is by Paolo Basaglupe and also Tobias S. Buckle. So this is a bit of an interesting one. So I've had this book for a couple of years and it's always sort of drawn my eye. I've just never gotten round to, to reading it basically. And I thought, right, we've just done, you know, quite a heavy book. Maybe a wee bit fantasy, you know, just ease it up a wee bit. So premise is, is that there is this magical land and basically people have been addicted to magic. Magic has been so overused that the land is massively polluted and any time anybody uses magic it has negative repercussions um, not only on them but also in the, the world where they are living. So I think that this sounds so interesting because I've never read a novel, a fantasy novel before where magic is a bad thing like it's always like a great thing and everybody can use it and it's brilliant and wonderful um so the fact that actually in this one like it was it was a bad thing i thought was really interesting and a really different take on it and while i was reading the book as well like i felt like there was so many parallels being drawn between you know magic use and pollution like and obviously you know, I felt like there was an environmental aspect there because they are basically wrecking their world with magic and we are wrecking our world with, you know, re plastics and air pollution and carbon footprints and all that jazz. So I, um, I felt like this could be quite an interesting read and something a wee bit different. And it certainly was. So what I didn't realise before I started reading it was actually that it's no one cohesive novel. It's almost like four short stories all set in this world. And so you get it for sort of four different perspectives and four different parts of this world and four people in different roles. Um, which I think is a really interesting idea. I just didn't think it was the best idea for this story. I think that if maybe this was like a companion book to a fantasy series, then that could have been cool, like a wee add-on, you know, like Assassin's Blade and Throne of Glass. I think that that would have been fantastic. I just felt like every time I was really getting emotionally invested in the characters and in the story, it would sort of end and then I'd be into like another characters and another part of this world story and then obviously like it's not like a fantasy novel where you would go back to your first narrator like it just is that is their story finished so I, I didn't really enjoy that aspect yet I just felt like I wasn't getting enough out of the characters and I wanted to because the characters and the world that they had written was fantastic so the fact that I actually wanted more of the character you know it really goes to show that the the book was written well I was just disappointed that I didn't get as much of the characters as that I wanted. I think that it was a very unique read and I think that if you do like short stories and you go into it knowing it's sort of almost a short story collection set in the same world then you'll maybe enjoy it a lot more. Again I didn't, I obviously didn't look it up properly before I decided to read it. 
So I really enjoyed the first two stories in the collection. I felt like they blended really well together as well and the second story sort of references the first and then the third story was just a total flop for me. I just really didn't enjoy it at all. I didn't really invest in the characters in that one and then it picked up a bit in the last story but again like I did the audio for this and so the last story was like an hour long like whereas your first couple were at least a couple of hours each so I felt like again like the the development wasn't as good as in the first story and the second story um, even though the premise was interesting and then again like the the last story sort of references the second story and I just felt like the third one just didn't fit. I think I would have enjoyed it a lot better if they took away the third one and just made the fourth one a bit longer. Um, I, I mean, it's an interesting take. It's something that I haven't really seen done a lot before. Like I said, unless it's like a, a companion novel or a you know a, a collection of short stories based in the same world as a fantasy series. So it was it was definitely unique. It just it was not my cup of tea. I just didn't enjoy it that much. I think it would have been better if they maybe made it a series and they just had like alternating POVs or something and then like it's the same overarching story. But I I didn't write the book and I wasn't consulted in the meeting so they've no taken my opinion on board. It was an interesting dark fantasy take on it um, and like I say I did enjoy the characters and the first two stories were absolutely dino. It was just the last two really let it down for me. And so overall I ended up rating it a three star just sort of middling. Then I read Scabby Queen by Kirsten Innes. So this um, was on my TBR that I set out for myself at the beginning of the year and I've sort of been biding my time with it um, because I have been so excited to get to it. Simon got me it like as soon as it came out and I was like, no, I am saving you for a rotten reading month <laughs> and you will perk me up. Um, and it did, so great. <laughs> so, um, I... I really enjoyed this book. Um, we have Cleo Campbell, who is a singer, songwriter, political activist, and on her after she turns fifty, she kills herself, and we get her life story basically from the closest people to her. Um, and it was just a really, really interesting book. I think that you know, it's obviously another Scottish author, and that sets out a really interesting political landscape, well for me at least being Scottish, it was really interesting to read and there's a lot of it you know that resonated with me when they're talking about Brexit and independence um, and certain things that are particularly unique to Scottish politics I really enjoyed and then it educated me on some stuff that I am a wee bit too young to remember, obviously with Cleo being 50 um, and so it taught me a wee bit about that and again just sort of how our political landscape has been shaped. That was really interesting as well as just Cleo being a really all over the place kind of character I found just to be so cool. So in the beginning I actually really struggled to get into the book. I felt I was a wee bit confusing as to what was happening. Like I just I, I just didn't really have a clue. <laughs> Um, and I, uh, that made it a wee bit difficult for me to actually get into but then when I was into it I was swinging it was so good so because we get Cleo's life story from different people's perspectives we get it from our best friend we get it from our dad from our mum from our ex-husband from people who met her at gigs from friends that she's had like so many different people and it jumps around quite a wee bit it was difficult just to keep track of who's who because you get introduced to like a whole host of characters all at once um, and it's just like whoa whoa like who's talking here what's going on what's happening um, but then when it sort of gets into a better chapter structure as the book goes on and you sort of know who these characters are already I feel like it's so much easier to follow um, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed this book I at some points felt like there was maybe some subplots that didn't really need to be there and um, there was definitely people's perspectives that I was much less interested in and I was like can we get back to this please um, but yeah, it was a it was a really great novel. I think that Cleo Campbell is such an interesting character because 
she is a different person to every single person's perspective that you read. She has meant so much to so many different people. And I've never read a book like this before where you're getting it for everybody else's perspective and you don't really get it for Cleo's. And I was a wee bit concerned that maybe we would get to know sort of everybody else a wee bit more than we would get to know Cleo and she wouldn't be the star of the show but it's definitely not like that she certainly is and you learn so much and I just felt like it was really interesting to find out all your good parts from people who have loved her all your bad parts for the people who have hated her um, and just get all of their opinions and thoughts and feelings and memories on her it's a wee bit sad but it felt like you were sort of at Cleo's wake and you were you know talking to all these different people and then um, we actually hear for Cleo herself and you find out why she killed herself and what happened and I just felt like this was such a powerful book I actually it was really emotional when we found everything out and how she felt what I loved about this book is that you know it is really politics heavy and I and Simon are both politics geeks, so I really enjoyed it and I really loved getting it for a perspective, you know, about women in politics. And I think as well, like after reading um, The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock, like this just fed into it. It's quite a feminist month for me and I was loving it. Um, you know, and it talks about the difference that women, you know, can make in politics and how they are labelled if they have really strong political opinions and um, the, the perception of that, you know, and it was just a really interesting read and there is definite misogyny in this book. There are, you know, trigger warnings for sexual assault and... Um, you know obviously suicide but it was just it was fantastic and at times I really loved Cleo and at times she was so frustrating and the choices she was making was so infuriating but I think that it's the same for everybody like no person is perfect and when we're scared and when we're backed into a corner you know we maybe don't make the best decisions and I just felt like she was such a real character that um, I think that the character of Cleo Campbell will stay with me for quite a long time um, and the same sort of way that Eleanor fell in her only a fan is completely fine stayed with me for quite a long time and I really did enjoy it. I think that, like I say, the only thing that, that let the book down for me um, was I just felt like there were some people's perspectives that just didn't really need to be involved. Or, like, if they wanted to be involved, you could have had one chapter for their perspective and then it didn't need to have went back because I just felt like there was nothing more that that person had to say and I was far more interested in learning about the other stuff that was going on. Um, but I, I really enjoyed this book um, I rated it a four star um, I think that it would have been a five star for me like I said if it was just maybe a wee bit more slimlined and some of the perspectives that didn't really need to be there weren't there because I didn't feel like they added all that much um, and it just sort of had attracted to some of the bigger issues that um, you know we were, we were discussing but it's, it's quite a heavy book I think that if you aren't really into politics you're probably not going to like it because it does talk heavily about political activism and um, it does talk heavily about you know specifically Scottish politics and um, sort of a women coming from a working class background so like right up my street yeah I really did enjoy it and I'm glad that I saved it for a month where I was having a wee bit of a rubbish reading month because like boy did it help <laughs> um, but I so that's what I read um, the second half of the month in July um, hopefully you've liked it if you've read any of the books please let me know and we can geek out about them in the comments if um, you've read any of the ones that I have DNF'd and you have enjoyed them please let me know um, maybe you can convince me to go back to them um, and you know no absolutely slate them <laughs> uh, hope you're having a good day See you after. Bye.